Now this is a sensitive subject. Whenever you talk about black quarterbacks, the issue often de-evolves to race because it wasn't that long ago that black men were not allowed to play the position. It was a de facto law. It was never in the NFL rule books. It was just something that NFL teams didn't do. Now, when I say that, you'll assume that I'm talking about the 1950s, the 1960s. No. We had this issue all the way through the 1980s. It wasn't until 1988 that we had Doug Williams, the first black quarterback to play in the Super Bowl. And it wasn't until then that we started to see progress. And over the past 30 years, that's exactly what we had. In the early 90s, we had Randall Cunningham, the human highlight machine up in Philadelphia. And we also had Warren Moon breaking passing records with the Houston Oilers. In the 2000s, we had Michael Vick, who broke all of Randall Cunningham's records in Atlanta, who had become a fan favorite up until he went to federal prison. And we also had Donovan McNabb, who became one of the first NFL players to receive a $100 million contract. And in addition to Vic and McNabb, there was Steve McNair, who I think is one of the most underappreciated quarterbacks in NFL history. Then further along in 2011, we had Cam Newton, who became MVP in 2015. And there were plenty of other quarterbacks along the way, but those were the superstars during that time. So now we are where we are now with Lamar Jackson, a 26 year old black quarterback and superstar who was the youngest ever to win MVP at age 23. And as a restricted free agent, he's eligible for a new contract with any team that desires him. But there are no offers on the table. Currently, he's signed with the Ravens, who are refusing to offer him the extension at the price he's asking for. They want to pay him 44 million per year over the course of three years guaranteed. But he wants somewhere in the neighborhood of 46 million per year for five years guaranteed. So they're at an impasse and he wants to play with someone else, but no one's offering him a deal. And it reminds everyone of the bad old days when black men were not allowed to play quarterback. They think he's being blackballed because of his race, that NFL teams are colluding against him. And I disagree. And I do so with a heavy heart because I am a lifelong NFL fan. I remember those days when black quarterbacks were rare and I celebrate where we are now where there's no stigma over a black man playing that position. Now, I was a little kid when Doug Williams was around, but I was told stories about him and that Super Bowl and how he shattered those stereotypes. And as someone who advocates for black masculinity, on the surface, it does seem troubling. But it's not like teams don't want him, they do. And they're willing to pay a large price, but not the price he's asking for. And ultimately, I think the primary reason he's not getting the offer he wants has to do with his mother. You see, Lamar Jackson is a son husband. His mother is his agent. And I think the advice she's giving him is what's led to him not getting the new deal. Why he's still a free agent in spite of his unique talent. But before I explain why, let me address the minor issues keeping him from getting a new deal. Number one, his asking price is too high. Jackson wants a contract similar to Deshaun Watson, which is $240 million guaranteed over the span of five years. Now for most teams, that means dismantling their roster in order to make room for his salary because the NFL has a salary cap. There's a limit on how much you can pay the players on your team. And if that isn't bad enough, you have to remember Lamar is a restricted free agent, meaning he can't just leave. If any team signs him, they have to give compensation to the Ravens in exchange for him. And according to NFL rules, that compensation is two first round picks. So not only do you have to pay him a massive amount of money that will cause you to restructure your roster, but you also have to forego your future in order to have him. And that's just a price that most teams are not willing to pay. The second reason why he's not getting a new deal is he's injury prone. You see, Lamar Jackson is a running quarterback. He takes more hits than the traditional pocket quarterback, which causes him to sustain more injuries. So he's not the type of player that can get through an entire season. His body won't hold up. In fact, the past two seasons, he's played a total of 12 games. And that's problematic because he's a unique talent. What I mean is Lamar Jackson is not a highly skilled quarterback, not when it comes to passing the ball. And to expound on what 
I mean. Here's a perspective from former NFL safety Bernard Pollard. So I, 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 I differ with a lot of people, um, you know, watching football, playing the game of football. He throws three to four routes. And when you look at crossers, everything, a lot of his routes are directly in front of him. Um, he holds on to the ball to allow that, that vision uh, to be there for him and the receiver. Now, when we talk about his deep ball, yes, he throws a, he throws a good deep ball. Um, and, and, but when, it, when we talk about everything outside of uh, the deep ball, there's a crosser. He might have a hitch and then they have, you know, some pick plays. Um, so, you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to hate on the guy. I think I think he's a spectacular athlete. But when I, I look at the development of him, a lot of people say he's really good. He's gotten better. I think, yes, he's gotten better. But when we look at what's going on, as far as the development of him as a quarterback, there's no adjustments. They come out. They play football. There's He doesn't read the defense. I think the Baltimore Ravens are looking at it and saying, look, our, our quarterback, if anything breaks down, is better than your 11 players. So if we don't, if these two plays, as far as passing routes doesn't work, he's going to take off and run and beat everybody on your team. I, I do believe there, there are things that he needs to fix in his game yeah. in order to take that team to the promised land. I, I think when you talk about this offense, I, I hear so many people all the time talk about Greg Roman, Greg Roman, Greg Roman is holding Lamar back. Yeah. I think if you get a new OC, I think he exposes what Lamar can't do. And I, I tell people all the time, when you look at pure quarterbacks, when you look at what these quarterbacks in the game are doing, Lamar is special. He really is. He's a special talent. I think, you know, he's he's legs first and then his arms come second. Um, you know, he's a guy that moves the defense with his legs. And that is true. Some people may not like that. I understand it. But that is the truth. He Defenses fear him because of his ability to run. When it comes to his ability to throw the football, I think he lacks in those areas. And when you look at Greg Roman... He's coming, as I said yesterday, and, and I stand by this uh, because of the comments that he said, he has a pacifier in his mouth. He's not making any checks. He's not moving the O-line. He's not checking out of certain plays to put himself into a better situation offensively. He's going in and what John Harbaugh, what Greg Roman, what Lamar Jackson is doing and the offense is doing is saying, my number eight is better than your 11. And 95% of the time, that is probably true. But backyard football is not sustainable in this National Football League. And I think one of the big things, one of the big things, when you look at people in the black community, they're always talking about, how you coming back? How you coming down on a, on a black man and this and that? Let me let you know something. I think from the start of this thing, we as black players, and we see this talent growing up. We see that kid that was running around throwing a ball, and we was like, man, that quarterback was shaking. He was doing all of this, and, and then he just threw the ball later or whatever. But, you know, he's a runner. We've seen that for so long growing up. And then now all of a sudden, we see it now in the National Football League, and we're like, Yo, like this dude is in the National Football League. We got to we gotta get behind him and go. I'm with all of that. I want him to succeed. I don't care that he's black. I want him to succeed. But like you said, I think the running thing is that's his natural instinct. And so when people say, well, we don't have a, a good offensive line. Well, his running ability, a, a good offensive tackle, a really good guard, they're going to be like, yo, bro, we're making this pocket for you to throw the ball in. And when he's sitting there running after he doesn't see his first read or that thing across the middle open, he wants to run. And so now that's holding penalties that your offensive line is going to get. You now you put that 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 the big boys now they got to run and block and everything else. And and when Lamar puts himself in these positions, he exposes himself to hits. And like I tell people all the time, when we look at this, we look at franchise quarterbacks. Lamar was an MVP. He was. He was phenomenal. He was fantastic. But there were still flaws in his game. Why? There's something going on. There's a reason why Baltimore has not paid him. I hope they come back and go, you know what? Let us prove them wrong. We're going to pay him top dollar. But there's a reason they have not paid him yet. And people don't get that. And everybody go, well, he's only 23. He, he has time. He's only 24. He has time. He's 25. Like, we can't keep saying this man has time. He has got to take that mouthpiece out of his mouth. He has got to check. I, I, I think that's one of the biggest things for me when I watch a football game. I'm looking like, bro, like they're blitzing. And you haven't even checked because they're saying he's better than the 11. But then at the end of the day, he's running right into that blitz because that's where he eluded. And that right there is going to continue to hold this organization, this team back. And uh, I just want him to get better at that. And so, yeah, he said it perfectly. Jackson doesn't make pre-read snaps. He doesn't go through progressions. He has a strong arm, but he doesn't throw the NFL route tree. He throws basic routes, routes suited for a high school quarterback. Now, he is gifted at running the ball, but he's what I call a one read and go quarterback, meaning he has one primary receiver to throw to on pass plays, and if that one receiver isn't open, he takes off with the ball. He doesn't look for the next guy. 
Again, that's real simple high school stuff. And that's okay because he's a unique athlete. And so far, he's been faster than his competition. And it's worked because the Ravens have built their offense around his talent. And they've had a lot of success with him. However, when he gets hurt, which he often does, it's because of his play style. And it's hard to replace him because there's no other quarterback in the league that can do what he does. And so when he goes down, the Ravens are out of luck. And that's another major concern for any team that would consider having him. You would bring him on your team for all of this money, knowing that he wouldn't be able to finish the season, which would put you in a position to find someone else who can't do what he does. And that brings me to my next issue, which is his longevity. Again, Lamar Jackson is not a sophisticated quarterback, not in a traditional sense. He plays in a unique, simplified offense that takes advantage of his running ability. He's not adept at passing the ball. He beats you with his legs, not his arms. His ability to pass the ball is based exclusively on his threat to run. Take that away and he's nothing. If he had the athleticism of a Tom Brady or Peyton Manning where he couldn't run or move, he wouldn't be productive on the NFL level, which thus far has not been an issue for him because of his ability to run. But he's getting old. Right now he's 26 after just finishing his fifth season, which isn't old for athletes, especially quarterbacks, but it is for quarterbacks with his play style. Those bumps and bruises tend to pile up, and that's why he's missed 10 games over the past two seasons. And while he's still fast, he's slowing down as a result. When he first came into the league five years ago, he was hands down the fastest player in the league. Now he's just one of the fastest and he's not running away from defenses like he used to. And that's why he's getting hit more often, which is why he's getting injured more often. And that's why giving him a five-year guaranteed deal is not a wise investment. Because if history is any indicator, he'll be a shell of himself pretty soon. Take Cam Newton, for example, who although is much bigger than Jackson, was also a running quarterback like Lamar Jackson. And if you compare their careers, you see their progression is identical. You see, Newton improved every year that he was in the league in his first five years. And by his fifth season, the same season that Lamar Jackson is in right now, he was an MVP. But afterwards, he was trash. His athleticism fell off, as did his production. The abuse he took as an athlete running the ball at the quarterback position caught up with him after five seasons. And again, Cam is a much larger guy. He's six foot five, 250 plus pounds. He was able to take the hits and play a healthy five seasons before he slowed down. And Lamar Jackson is around six foot two, 200 pounds. Don't believe that bull about him being 230 pounds. That's far from the truth. And unlike Cam Newton, Jackson is already showing signs of his body breaking down prior to finishing his fifth season. And that leads teams to believe that his best years are behind him, that he's about to hit the wall if he hasn't already, given his inability to remain healthy. But none of that would be a factor if Lamar Jackson was developing into a pro-style quarterback. Him slowing down as a runner would be fine if he was able to sit in a pocket and beat teams with his arm. But after five years, he has yet to do that. He has yet to learn that. His skill level is no higher than when it was when he initially came into the league. So he's too expensive, injury prone, and doesn't look to be a long-term solution. But the main reason why Lamar Jackson isn't getting the offers he's looking for is because he's a son husband. Now, for those who don't know what a son husband is, it's a son who acts in the emotional role of a husband to his mother. It's a woman who imprints on her son the way a wife would a husband. Now, most of the time, it happens between single mothers and their sons. But sometimes it does happen when the mom is married. And the overwhelming majority of the time, it's just that, an inappropriate emotional bond. But in rare cases, it does become physical. Examples would be Blueface and his mother, Scrappy and his mom, and the rapper Jim Jones and his mother, Nancy. She told me how to kiss when I was younger. Huh? She told me how to tongue kiss when I was younger. Like, like what's the instructions? It wasn't no instructions. She showed me with her mouth. Like, she... She kissed you? 
It's my mother. No, I'm just asking. Okay. Now, I can't go any further in explaining what it is, aside from those examples. For starters, I'm not an expert on the issue, and even if I was, breaking it down would take us off topic. But if you want a further understanding of what it means to be a son husband, I highly recommend these videos from Dr. Tia San Johnson, who was an expert on the issue. I'll post the links in the description. Be sure to check them out and subscribe to his channel. But yeah, Lamar Jackson is a son husband, and I don't mean that to deride his mom. She wasn't a single mother by choice. His father died when he was little, but he was raised by his mother. She was the dominant voice in his life, and she was the one who molded his career, even going back to college. There's an article in Heavy Magazine where it talks about how his mom was instrumental in keeping him at the quarterback position while he was in college. You see, the coaching staff had recruited him to play quarterback, but they had him returning punts one day in practice. And when his mother found out, that's code for Lamar calling home and telling his mother. She called the head coach and, quote, reminded him of the promise he made her son. And from that day forward, he never returned punts again. And I guess I can say that's a good thing. I mean, he did make it to the NFL as a quarterback and an MVP. However, she is acting in the role of his agent, a role she has no experience in which was okay when he was a rookie because those contracts are regulated by league rules. There isn't much to do in terms of negotiations. But it's also why, in spite of him being an MVP and a really popular athlete, he doesn't have much in the way of endorsements, not for a player of his caliber. But it's also why I believe he's in the contractual mess that he's in now. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier about Lamar Jackson's asking price. You see, with his mother acting as his agent, there's no one on his team that understands the market. Because Jackson wants a contract similar to Deshaun Watson's five years, 230 million guaranteed, with a base price of 46 million. And he was offered 133 million for three years fully guaranteed, with a base price of 44.3 million, which is a difference less than 2 million a year. Now, some say that's disrespectful because Jackson is a better quarterback than Watson, but I disagree. Now, Deshaun Watson isn't the athlete that Lamar Jackson is. He's close, but he's not the same. However, he is a skilled pocket passer, and he rarely misses games. Watson is a healthy, reliable quarterback who is adept at playing the position because he can play from the pocket and doesn't take as many hits as a Lamar Jackson. So Jackson getting a contract comparable to his isn't that bad of an offer, but he turned it down. Why? Because there's no one on his team, and by team I mean his management team, to explain how good a deal that was. Neither he nor his mother understand the market. And another area where he was hurt by having his mother as his agent is that neither understand how the salary cap works. Now I need you to bear with me a moment because things are going to get a bit complicated. I'm going to mention a lot of dates, and I'm going to try my best not to come across as confusing. On March 27th, Lamar Jackson announced on Twitter that he told the Ravens on March 2nd that he wanted to be traded. And the problem with that is nobody except for the Ravens knew that he asked for a trade. Both the Ravens and Jackson's team kept that quiet. And the reason why that's a problem is because NFL teams prepare for free agency as soon as the season ends. And they begin making cuts on March 6th to prepare to sign free agents on March 15th. And seven days later, on March 22nd, all the teams that were looking to sign free agents have already spent all of their money. So when Lamar Jackson let the world know on March 27th that he asked for a trade, all the big money was gone. Most teams don't have any money left to sign him. So any team that might have been interested in acquiring him likely doesn't have the money now. So the Ravens played that situation perfectly by not letting anyone know he wanted to be traded, while Jackson and his team played that situation foolishly by not letting teams know he wanted to be traded. Because now teams don't have the money to go after him, which forces Jackson to play at the asking price that the Ravens are offering. Remember, he's a restricted free agent. He can't just leave. He can negotiate with other teams, but if no team signs him, he 
has to play for the Ravens. And that's going to happen because his mom wife doesn't know what she's doing. You see, a professional agent would have let teams know on day one he wanted a trade. At the time, that teams had money to sign him. We can look at his asking price. We can look at the fact that he's injury prone, the fact that he's a unique talent with longevity issues, and we can maybe even consider race. But at the end of the day, the fault lies with him for allowing his mother to run his career. And that's the reason why I believe that a 26 year old quarterback, a former MVP, is not getting the offers that he thinks he deserves. Why no team is interested, including the Ravens, at paying him at the price he's asking for. Okay, so you've heard me say this a million times. So if you like this video, please give it a like and leave a comment in the comment section and share the link on your social media platforms. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way you'll get alerts every time I upload a new content. This is The Layman's Journal. Thanks for stopping by. I'm out. Hell! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! And while I do appreciate you sharing, subbing, and leaving comments, I'm gonna ask that you take another step further in keeping the channel going. I set up a membership plan for those of you who would like to offer further support in the development of this channel. It's not anything expensive or special, I'm just asking for 99 cents a month, which is enough for me to continue doing the work that I do here. Help me! Help me! Help me! In the future, there will be additional tiers with added benefits, but for right now, I just need your support so that I can cover basic costs. So please, sign up so I can continue bringing you awesome content. This is The Layman's Journal. I'm out.